Well, hello. Today I'd like to give you my first impressions of the Estabrook SJ. SJ is, stands for Slender J, or Short J, sorry, Short J. Uh, so this is a, like a Estabrook J pen, just shorter. So let's take a look at it. This is the Estabrook SJ fountain pen. There is a Estabrook J pen, so we'll put that one down for comparison. The Estabrook J, this orange one, is a uh, standard size. There is an Estabrook LJ, which I do not own, which is the same size as the J, just thinner. This is SJ, which is uh, Estabrook for short slender. And there is also a CH, which is a purse pen with a clip. Where did my other pen holder go? Zoom out so you can get the full effect here. So those are the three models that I'm that I have. There is also you, you, when you get out there, you might find transitional models like this one, and uh, there is an H model, which is a clipless purse pen. But I want to focus my attention on the short slender pen today. When I'm choosing what pen to ink up, I'll be honest, I don't usually reach for this one. Uh, and this is a review more than a first impression because I've owned this pen for a number of years. It's just a little too small for my taste. Um, you know, when I hold it in my hand, it's kind of at that point where, oh, I don't know. I might have to post you and I don't like posting. So that makes me mad. <laughs> that sounded really stupid. Okay, anyway, there we go. So uh, if we look at the nib... Of course, the fun with Estabrook, once you get into them, is that the nibs screw out and they're easy to replace. Back in the day, they used to have them in the stores. They're just e easy to go in. Oh, I want a flex nib and just get one. So this is a 9134F, which is a fine relief nib. So relief is uh, Estabrook's way of saying it's, it's sort of um, oblique. But it's fine, so... I, I'm usually happy with Estabrook nibs. The only one I've found that I don't like is their uh, Flex. So, actually, before I write, maybe I should put some ink in it. So, I've done a bunch of reviews this morning. I'm using up the last dregs of my Parker Quink Washable Blue. Have no fear. This I've filmed enough videos this morning to last for a few weeks. And... Uh, I've got another bottle of Parker Quink Washable Blue, so that, that's not the end of it on this channel. To the dismay of some and the pleasure of others, I suppose. Okay, I can't quite grab the ink squirter thing, the lever bar. There we go. Oh, lots of nice bubbling. This pen illustrates, by the way, why there are several sizes of J-bars out there. If any of you have gotten into vintage, you know, they, the pens come in several lengths, so the J-bars which fit inside of them have to as well. I did not replace the J-bar, and this one came with a sack that was actually working, so I had to do nothing to this one. Which is unusual. I, I did a little cleaning and did pen flush and stuff, but that's unusual for me. So this is the Estabrook SJ, and the nib, oh shoot, I can't read. When you get that shiny metal, it's just so hard to read in this lighting. But I got my loop here, 9314 fine. Okay, so the ink, of course, is Parker Quink. Washable blue. As far as flex, most of uh, Esther Book's nibs are nails, and this one is no exception. 
you can kind of see oops you can kind of see the obliqueness here which is why it's relief nib uh, wetness and flow so I was just looking to feed it just looks a little different anyway wetness and flow So holding it kind of diagonally like this, that's what oblique nibs are made for. For those of you who just, you know, roll your nib. Uh, smear test, which I'm going to predict some smearage here. Whoop! And not disappointed. Uh, reverse writing, which... You know, I hear some people are into that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. So, that's always a crapshoot with an oblique nib. And yeah, it's scratchy and looks basically the same, only harder to do because it's backwards. So, there's your reverse writing. And, of course, we need to do the world-famous Pierre Gustafson test. Lightly, lightly, lightly. I think it passed that one with flying colors, which doesn't surprise me. Like I said, I like my Estherbrook nibs, except, except, for the, uh, except for the Flex one. Okay, my big, biggest objection to this pen is it's a little too short. I'm just not thrilled with this aspect of it. It just I wish it was a little longer. Uh, the other complaint I have with this pen is something that I can fix. I just have to take it apart does not hold a whole heck of a lot of ink. I mean, I wrote this thing dry the day I filmed the writing part of the first impression. Um, I don't know if the sack's not big enough. I, I can't remember anymore if I installed the sack or if it's one I bought that somebody else had done or if it was donated to me. I just don't remember anymore. I've had this pen for a long time. But anyway, yeah, it runs out of ink very quickly. So, not good. Uh, but yeah, it looks a lot like an Estherbrook J. Um, it's not quite as thick, um, which might also have to do with why it doesn't have nearly the ink capacity. It's uh, shorter. Uh, it makes it a little more portable. So if you're into that kind of thing, this is probably your, your pen. And it uses the exact same nibs as the Estherbrook J. They're pretty much interchangeable between all their different models. Uh, as far as the pocket test, slips on very nicely. Has a decent hold in my pocket. So, I like it. I like that part of it. Uh, I'm just, like I said, not thrilled with the ink capacity. And uh, it, it's just a little too short for me. So, anyway, I want to thank you for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.